had actually um, emailed two different law firms and told them that I I had, I had done this at the start itself, um, yeah. the start of my LLM itself, where I had sent an email out to them saying that I am interested in working with you. What do you think about this? Can I work part time for now and then later on maybe I can come here full time? Um, it didn't work out for me in the end because, as you can see, I am more interested in research and teaching rather than um, uh, in law firms. So I, I in the end, rejected the offer itself that they made, which was that work part time with us. We'll pay you the um, eight hundred dollars, a thousand dollars a monthly itself. They said they'll pay that much. Um, and one important thing you need to know about law firms in Singapore is that the bar that you give in Singapore, um, the law firm sponsors you for this. So they require a commitment from you as well. And if you are interested in working in Singapore in a law firm, um, I don't know about the top law firms. Um, I'm talking based upon, let's say, mid-sized law firms. What, what works best is if you say that you want to work part-time with them and at least work with them for half a year, one year before you um, then finally graduate and then you write the bar. Uh, there are definitely places that will take take you for that. Uh, that being said, a lot of places might also have, have a bias that they want their own citizens. Um, it It's definitely there for a lot of things. It's definitely there for academia as well, I'd say. I wanted to apply for a particular fellowship and I was discouraged because they said that it only Singaporeans take it. And when I asked them, why don't you write this on the fellowship itself that don't apply? Because I had asked, I think, three or four professors in NUS, and all of them told me that don't apply for this. You will <laughs> never get this fellowship. So I asked a professor, why don't you write this on the um, link itself that only Singaporean um, candidates apply? And even the professor was like, I don't know why we don't write this. We should write this on this. So um, there are particular areas where you have to be very careful as well. But with respect to law firms and um, let's say lawyers, litigation, I do think if you're strategic enough, you can easily get in over there. All right. And perhaps a good foundation can uh, for this can be part-time jobs. You can get your name out there, secure an internship later on, and eventually apply for a job later on. So more than part-time jobs, um, as I said, let's say you get into NUS right now um, yeah. and it starts in August, if I'm not wrong. I think it was August when the courses start. In August itself, when I have my student pass, there's again a, one extra addition of your visas that you have to have an in-principle approval letter when you are going from India or any yeah. other country. And once you reach Singapore, you have to go to the ministry again to apply for the student pass which you get, of course, but it's an extra step. So once you get the student pass, which is, let's say, two or three weeks after you reaching Singapore, you can start emailing these um, law firms or lawyers that you're interested in working with. Don't email too many of them. Again, it's not a very big country. You will find them talking about, oh, yes, this student maybe had applied to me as well. So be a little strategic in where you want to work. And you can start working part time, have a part time internship with them from August or September itself. And if you really love the work over there, just continue with them throughout the year. Um, even in your semester break, have the full time internship there. And this will just build your credibility with them. And they would be more open to having you in their law firm after the end of the year. So if, if you really find that place if, with a lot of research, of course, don't just directly, you know, accept any. Um, I think it becomes quite easier. And these law firms, they're very um, amenable to the timings of NUS. Let's say I told them I can't work on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They're like, sure, that's all right. You work on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, as long as you finish the work, it does not matter. So that's a nice yeah. environment. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that um, it's a better environment because I used to meet my friends from law firms. I had friends who were working law firms there. Um, they used to be done with their work by seven o'clock, I'd say. So I mean, and they get paid really well. So I think that's something that's quite. Um, Just at that point, uh, like it kind of ties into the cost question. If one is to secure employment at one of these mid-tier law firms, what kind of pay are you looking at? So um, see, I think. Again, I will not be the best person to ask this because I just know a couple of people and how much they earn. So yeah. these people, let's say, would earn somewhere around $3,500 to $4,000. Okay. 
uh, mid tier. Um, Thirty five four thousand per month. Yeah. Again, um, you at the start of it, you will not be living in a luxurious apartment entirely by yourself. You'll still be sharing an apartment, like I did. Let's say one room, one bathroom to yourself, but the living room and um, kitchen is shared with one other person or couple. So I don't think you'll have that luxurious house at the start of it. But as I told you at the start, where um, I managed my expenses within two thousand dollars, and this was not me living, you know, um. like a how should i say this it wasn't me living without any luxuries i had a really great apartment um i had um it was an apartment with a, with a swimming pool and um gym as well so i used to swim a lot let's say i used See, to go out i used to, <laughs> i used to go to movies a lot i used to go to mystery rooms and etc etc i used to go out more uh, quite a bit So it's not that I am saying two thousand only staying in your house and not going out at all or not eating outside food. I used to eat outside food. I didn't know how to cook much, so I did kind of survive on let's say restaurants and etc. So I do think that expenses can be managed within two thousand, which means that you will still be able to save thousand to two thousand every month. And this is if you live like that, of course. I think this is one of the reasons why. I've seen a lot of Singaporeans have a lot of holidays and vacations because they go to Malaysia and Indonesia, which are way cheaper than Singapore. So okay. I think that because they get paid so much, they actually have a better um, work-life balance as well, in which they do manage to have these vacations uh, nearby as well. 